Are we doing this? Broken out on this thing. It's not broken. Take two. <laughs> uh, well, welcome to Jordan Matthew. What's up, dude? What you doing, buddy? Oh, man. Just been uh, nursing a hangover since that Neptune Golf Tournament. How was that? Hot. Uh, we did the 10 o'clock. No, I'm sorry. The 8 o'clock tea time. And they actually called us about a day ahead and said they moved it to 730 for heat purposes and for coronavirus guess purposes and 30 minutes of me less sleep for purposes i guess and i'd say about 11 o'clock it was miserable so we quit <laughs> i'm not really worried about the golf game how did our uh skit uh flyer um posters do oh did great did great had a couple of those hanging up got some good laughs uh, enough for me to go ahead and debut it on facebook i think you saw that today um, a lot of work went in that yeah i think uh a lot more is going into the whole skit, but it's going to look good. It's going to come out good. I'm excited for it. What did Gerald think? He laughed. He giggled. There you go. That's all that matters. That's all that matters. Yeah. Got a good giggle out of it. I think he was just more, he was happy that it wasn't him on the poster. As, uh, came I, close, Gerald. I know. We, we talked about it. So yeah, Came close, buddy. But what's new with you, man? What did you get into this weekend? Man, um, got to spend some time with uh, old Richard Hawthorne. Um and then hang out with the family, and pretty much, I did a lot of uh, some online classes. Yeah, more of those. I'm trying to master Adobe. It's a task. Oh yeah, it is. My brain's like, oh man. And how long are those classes? I mean, average. I mean, I probably, I'm probably, I'll probably put in. I can't do the same thing, so I do probably three hours on one and three hours on the other. So I break it up. Because I feel like you take you're, you're taking too much. You can't cram everything in that something you're learning, or you can kind of forget it. Right. So I kind of that's just, my problem. I forget. Even whenever I'm doing the little stuff that I do, you know, I, I get into it and then I'll do something repetitive or something that I've already done in the past. And and sometimes it takes like something to trigger the memory in my head, like, oh yeah, this is what I have to do. Or this is how I go about. And it. that's but the thing is, like with me and Adobe and tutorials and 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 class stuff. It's just like you going golfing. It's it's I look at Adobe and being and creating as much as golfing hobby, hunting. Oh man, I don't golf near enough for it to be that much. Maybe but, hunting or fishing. But you, but I'm still like I, I consider my pa I consider it a passion like a hobby. Yeah. It's fun. It's so I what I, I learned from that is like I would do like try to cram one thing in and it just doesn't work. So you just need to kinda let it be and diversify. You're gonna grab a little bit of it. You're gonna go, oh yeah, and it's gonna catch on slowly but surely. Practice makes perfect, and keep and you doing just it. Chip away at it. You know, I think I've gotten written down in the, in the bathroom in there. Small steps are still steps that lead to strides. Or you know, sweep the like, leg. Yeah, there's a few things written in there. <laughs> or Swan Lake was Swan, a good movie. <laughs> Swan Lake was a good movie. I can't remember that movie. No, I can't either. No, I do remember it. Um, do you ever see. remember playing Crossfire? Yeah, I do actually do. It's some time in the future. The ultimate challenge. Crossfire. Crossfire. You can count the crossfire. Crossfire. You can count the crossfire. 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 Get yeah. uh, I actually texted my mom the other day asking if she had it because I was curious if we still owned it as a family. And, and typically every now and again, she'll bring something that was mine over to the house. Mom's been doing that to me, too. And like, here, this is yours. But does she bring it all at once or does she like trickle it on down to you? Like, trickle it down like, um, you know, Batman glasses you love, yeah. the Ninja Turtle. You'll start seeing she'll just and there's like boxes that we go in the attic and. I mean, there's... There's more and more. Oh, uh, there's toys up there and stuff. Yeah, I, I wonder mean, what all we got up there. I mean, that's where the accordion came from. I think there. I think there's a Pee Wee Herman pull string doll up there. Oh, no. I need to get him. I'm serious. What are, what are some things that he said when you pulled the string? I don't remember. I really don't. But I've was, I was been thinking about it. But I, I think me and you'll go through a couple boxes and see... I know there's a Ninja Turtles VHS. I saw some VHSs oh, today. I was thinking about like how I could play them if I had one. I don't even have a VHS player or know if they still make them. You know what I'm shocked of is um, how much I used to love playing board games. Man, I did some, but I was so ADD. Like Monopoly, that's a commitment. 
right? And then I remember Connect Four was one that I liked because that required some skill and some deception into that game. You know, you could like kind of look at the hand here and why you do the numbers and the and the. I don't remember how to play that game. You get four in a row. That's it. Connect Four. I think it's pretty self-explanatory. What are some other board games I used to play? Um, Stratego. I don't know if you ever played that one. My dad was big on that. It was like a version of chess, like you had some kind of form of brevity or importance of your pieces, and it was a strategic moving. Um, we played that one a lot. I think a lot of the games we played was your basic Uno. That's not a board game. That's a card game. I know, but the same games. Trouble. I consider it, I consider it a board game. game. Topple? No, it was Trouble, I think. Apples to Apples. I remember when that came out, we played that a lot. Oh, yeah. Um, Life, I played that a few times. Clue. Yahtzee. Mousetrap. Mousetrap was dope. Uh, operation. Yeah, I think I still have operation. But would you consider operation a board game? Yeah, I'm, there's I a mean, board. Are, are you sure though? Yeah, I, mean, I would. But like dominoes, I wouldn't consider that a board game. But how do you know? I don't. They're made by the same companies. Uh. But um, shout out to you know Mattel and and uh, who else is Milton Bradley? They were board games makers. And the maker of the Crossfire. Is it Milton? No, they're not Milton Bradley. Oh, yeah, it is. No, it's not. Oh, yeah, it is. It's not. It's we'll Google, else. It. Google it. Uh, all right, let me Google it. Okay. I bet it's not because I looked at it earlier and it's not them. Um, we, got, we got a dollar on this? Yeah, two. Two dollars. Okay. Up. Let's go. Crossfire. You who get caught up in the <laughs> crossfire. I mean, the commercial did it did justice. It's Milton Bradley. Is it? Yeah, right here. Crossfire, a board game by Milton Bradley Company, 1971. And that was the first one they did. They did, it was um, 1971, they did one board, which is longer, like the old school hockey board. Yeah. And it did one puck. And then they, they went through different styles, and it stayed kind of that way. For, and then that's our version is the, like the 94 release or I think they had a different release in like 88 or something like that. But when are they going to recreate it again? I don't think they are. They just re, I mean, they, they, I know they, in 2006, they brought it back out. I think they should do like a real size, full size per like version. I mean, I think they need to bring people what they want. They need them hoverboards in there. I think you should get crossfire and you get a hoverboard. I've got it. Check it out. <laughs> you got a hoverboard? No. But you know what I mean? That's the commercial that sold me was the the kids on the hoverboard. Yeah. You really didn't care about the game as much as the hoverboards. No. I think those games, you cared about the crowd that was cheering you on. Mm. <sighs> so intense. And the lightning balls. Yeah. <laughs> um, what, uh, so who won the tournament? Dude, I don't even know. So, like I said, it was so hot. I left. We went to uh, Josh Kivett's, got in the pool, ended up having a big after party there. And just got wasted, good and toasty. And uh, then Sunday, I just recovered all day. It was nice. Josh got a nice pool. Yeah. Oh really man, nice. it was so nice, especially when it was. Is, did he have his hair slick back? Always. 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 Yeah. yeah. Shout out to Josh and his hair. Shout out to Josh and his pool. Thanks for letting us come over. Yeah, Josh. Thanks for the invite. Yeah. You should have showed up. It would have been fun. More fun. It was fun. And. Uh, Saturday was Saturday was kind of like, babe, I, she did some arts and crafts and, you know, hanging out with Oliver. That was a lot of fun, though. The older it, he gets, the cooler he gets. Yeah, I was just playing with him a little bit downstairs with that Jurassic Park so, toy. He was having fun with it. Oh, yeah. I chased him around. He ran. He was scared of it. He, he, likes, he likes dinosaurs. I could tell. Yeah, he pointed at a whole pile of dinosaurs. And I went and picked them up, and I showed him. He could use that one that that he got today. How to use the mouth to pick up the other ones, and you could see it like the gears turning in his head, like as he was figuring it out. And then he took it and immediately tried to bite my toe off with it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, you see that they're about to maybe potentially cancel college football this year. What? Yeah, I don't know. It's popping up on the on the news feeds today. Which they had already came out and said that they were going to minimize the season by a bunch of games, and they were only going to play conference games. And then I guess it was probably seven, eight o'clock this morning. I saw a pop up that they were expecting it to be canceled completely here in the next few days. But I guess we'll have to wait and see. 
it's a lot of money that they'll be missing out on. And I, you know, I played a little football, so like I feel sorry for the guys who've been practicing and getting ready to play. Um, I don't know how they if they lose a year el- eligibility or or what, but yeah, what I mean, what's that going to impact uh, the NFL? Oh, it might, it might, it might not have a. Well, I don't know. In- NFL's set to start. I think we're talking I know about ratings doing are our, dropping right now. Yeah, everything's dropping right the now. The ratings, all the people staying at home, they're very shocked at. I'm thinking. Well, I'm bummed because we're, we're working on doing our fantasy football league, which we do every year, and, and we're looking at doing a draft. I think at the end of this month, but now we all of a sudden have to compete with. We don't even get to see any preseason games. Well, if somebody gets hurt, we don't know who's good. We don't know if any of the rookies are good. Normally, that's a whole advantage that you have to to picking out your squad is being able to watch them for a little bit. So, have you ever won a uh, fantasy game? Uh huh. You have yeah. won a season? The whole league, yeah. Really? Yeah. What'd you get? Um, I don't remember money, but that's that's typically how it goes. I think last year I was in three. Hundred dollars, I think, was the most expensive league. Hundred dollar dues, and then I think fifty dollars was probably the cheapest. I did it one year. Did you win? No. You just donated? No, I just got in it, and um, I was pretty upset because like I had Nelms and I had some good guys. This is a couple years ago, uh, and like Gordy Nelms, he he got hurt, and then I just a lot of my guys got hurt, and I was like, you know what, this Dude, this yeah. thing ain't working. Then had these serious guys that I was playing with, and they're like, you, you need to trade, you need to do this, you need. And I yeah, was like, it ruins the fun for it. it takes it all out. I agree. Sometimes I just kind of keep – I'm a silent player. And I am too. But I do pay attention to stuff. And yeah. now, right now, we can't pay attention to anything because they're not doing anything. So that makes it – it makes it hard. And uh, I think I'm committed to doing it as long as as long as they still play. But I did hear that they're supposed to only have like 15,000 people in the stadiums now, which is – normally they have 80,000 to 150,000, you know. And it, could be a, I mean, it could be a big deal for um, – Season ticket holders, I'd be pissed. For a lot of well, sports in general. Sports in general. I mean, they're seeing a lot of people stay at home, but they're seeing a lot of people not watch sports. Well, that's kind of a good thing, too. The more people don't watch, the more people go out like and NBA's, interact. NBA's and, ratings are dropping. Uh, NASCAR just dropped. And it's just been like... Jordan Matthews' ratings are up. I hope. We're doing good. Well, I think I think if you take anything that's... You, when you do, like, sporting events and you do... Uh, it's, it's time for enjoyment. When you start bringing politics and all this stuff, oh, man. it just takes the fun out of it. it. Takes the fun out of a lot. Yeah, so I don't really, you know, sports need to be sports. Yeah. I mean, that's the reality. And, I don't mean it. And the world needs to be more tolerant and not less nosy and offended. I stop. I can tell you. I go right back to why I, my love fell away from football. You know how much I love the Saints. You know how I was. I mean, I was. I used to love watching football. Yeah. I enjoyed it, but the bounties. Bounties. I, the bounties this did it for dude, me. You know, it probably still goes on. I know, but the bounties did it for me with all these rules. Like, okay. And it's just like one year. And then every year, if you ever, the NFL, every year they got a new rule. There's yeah. a new something you can't do. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's all about lobbying, dude. The, the Saints the laws law, are the same way. Right. You know, but, every year there's a new law passed. And, but the Saints losing, you know, losing their opportunity with the Super Bowl over that call. Oh, that's garbage. And it's like, and guess what? Everybody's still praising, but you get to a point where you're like, they took that, they took that call back out. So then they made it where you can challenge a. Doesn't a, matter. They ruined it. Was it did it ruined it for the Saints? What if they just left? What if they would have called the right call? Then we'd have probably won the Super Bowl that year. Exactly. Yeah, and Drew Brees would probably be retired already. And they're doing it, but I'm just saying, like, it's going to get to a point where you keep watching it, and you're like, okay, all right, this is super fun, or no? I'll keep watching it. I mean, and there's a lot of people that will. Yeah. But you're not. You can't get. I'm interested to see what the Rock's gonna do. I hope he comes in and XFL is what I want. Yeah, exactly. Like if what if all the good NFL players start switching over to the NFL? I mean XFL, and then all of a sudden NFL's gone and Goodell's gone, and the draft, the NFL draft, would actually be the XFL draft, and then they would start getting rookies. That would be cool. That would be a shift of power. I'm all about a big shift of power. I feel like we need one. I'll get back in. The, I'll get back in the sports if you know with like XFL if like. It's a sport, not politics. Yeah, I can't imagine the, the Rock being into politics, or I, I feel like he's too worried about <clears throat> success to try to to try to tear anything apart. And that and that goes where, you know, I I, I enjoy watching the sport. I love watching people work. I mean, I love people busting their ass and working hard and trying. And you know, especially in football, you watch you know you watch these teams really put it put it in all all they have. They throw it in full energy. Here we go. Dude, have you ever seen uh, Hard Knocks, the training camp? Oh, yeah. 
or they do HBO does like is that, a, that's the Raiders, right? It's every they pick a new team every season. I think I watched the Raiders, maybe Dude, or the been, Rams. It's been awesome. Rams was I think last year. Yeah, I think it was the Rams to watch. Anyway, they're about to have another one because I just saw it added uh, or they're an ad for it um, for this year. So they are having some kind of season training, I think. Unless it was a repeat for one that was in the past, maybe so. I don't remember, but I have to do some more research. But typically, what they do is they go into the training camp and they follow like the rookies that just got drafted. They follow anybody that's been traded, and then they go into the vet, you know, and talk to the vet of the team. But it shows them progress. The I mean, it's probably like a two month long camp, and they narrow it down to like four episodes, five episodes. So I think it's a, a month of them actually practicing, and then they have their preseason games, which are a week apart. And then it shows like the whole week leading up to the preseason game, and then just little clips of the preseason game. Oh, uh, but you see the effort that these people put in. You see people get cut. You know, you see people who are oh trying yeah. to make it, or they're on the bubble of making it, and they get cut. And it's a real, it's a lot of raw emotions trapped into you know a few scenes. And it, to me, being in that lifestyle at one point, not not that high of it, but but still, you you feel compassionate and you feel kind of. You know, a part of it, or you, that their hurts, your hurt sometimes, or their excitement's your excitement, and that's the shift that I love in football. You know, I, I love the Saints, but I like players, and I like to be able to find somebody and be a and fan then of that. Goes person. to Tampa, yeah. I mean, I'll still be a fan. I think Tampa's going to be crazy if they get if they're playing this year. Yeah, we'll uh, see. Well, I mean, I've did the TV. All, all of this TV COVID stuff might be made. No, but all of this COVID stuff that might be just made up to stop Tom Brady from going to. Yeah, but have you? Yeah, probably true. Have you? You haven't done TB12, have you? No, but it, I've heard you talk about it a few it, times. Yeah, and it's a good book. You need to dive into the audiobook, but it's about his life. And it's like. Mr. Irrelevant, last draft pick. But it makes sense of why he's who he is. Yeah. It's like you wouldn't, you know what I mean? Like his, from the way he plays um, with his team to the way he trains at night, or it's like, you know, his, his wide receivers stay at his house and eat dinner with him, and, and, and there's really, you know, no drinking. And if there is drinking— Well, that's why Gronk came back. But there's a glass of water, so he spends like— Well, it, Gronk drinks. He can't stop him. For well, no, but I mean, it's at, at the TV 12 how he does the system, how he works. Well, I definitely got any respect for anybody who's got that repetitive grind. It's one of them very, very much like, this is this is my life. I'm going to go throw that ball all day long. A like, lot of those guys are like that. It's, it's crazy. crazy. I remember yeah. watching the Terrell Owens one. And this is years ago. He only played in 10 years. Maybe not that way. Don't quote me on that. But anyway, the dedication he had. He would just sit out there and run rounds by himself. Or was he'd pay somebody to throw football at him. Like Kobe Bryant. They said Kobe Bryant used to, uh, he'd, before the game, he would play for hours before the game. <laughs> out there by himself? By himself. Just so when the game started. See, I'd be worn out. Yeah. I, if I go bowling, my first bowling game is, is really good, and then it just tears off and falls to terrible after that. But then it comes to winning. It's, you know, I think Tom Brady's set up that he wants to win. Yeah. He there's definitely no, wants to win. There's no doubt. In his, he, he's, got, he's got all the money. He's got to go through Lamar Jackson now. Andrew Brees twice, which that's what I'm scared of. What? <laughs> Drew Brees and the Saints. I'm not excited about it. I mean, I feel like. We'll do good, but I feel like we're going to come short again. I hope, I hope Thomas catches a lot of balls. I think he will. I hope Cam Jordan gets a lot of sacks. Yeah, that's going to happen, though. Yeah. He's, he's my favorite. I Is think. he? Yeah, on the defense. He's just got that swag, as they say. I'm still rooting for the Browns. You know? I just want to see it. Look, they're a young group. want to see it. Yeah. They're a young group. We just want to see it. I mean, you got to uh, – t- I mean, Drew Brees, Tom Brady. I mean, got Lamar Jackson, but, I mean – couple of the quarterbacks are, are veterans there's some yeah. veterans in the game yeah that's true i like I, I do like the i just hope we get to see any of it and i hope they don't follow suit with the trend of maybe what's going to happen with college and i mean i'm curious you got kids back in school now i feel like the first kid that gets it they're going to have to shut the whole school down and send all the teachers home or the first teacher that gets it could you imagine it's going to come down it's going to come down to ratings yeah it's about to happen i mean it, it, they've been in school maybe for three or four days now i think you mean to tell me in three or four days nobody's contracted the coronavirus at any of the coast schools and these and masks are what's stopping it? I don't believe it. So once it does happen, we'll we'll get to see like how the coast reacts to it. But here's my thing on all this is uh how many deaths? I don't think there's a lot. Exactly. So yeah. I mean, oh, do we stop life? No. What comes to the time point where you go, you know, do we stop life? Do we I'm not stopping. Guess what? Life ain't stopping for us. No, not at all. <laughs> so. And I was like, my thing is like, I'm not going to, uh, you know, I've been wearing my mask and 
Oh, I can't. I'm, I can't. For, I can't remember it. You know, it's phone, wallet, keys out the door, and phone, wallet, keys, mask hasn't made it into my mind yet. So I've got thirty masks now, and they're all just like draped out from one end of my house and my car to the other. I'm gonna keep living. Yeah, and it's part of life. I mean, I've been very sick with the flu. I mean, I've yeah, I had swine flu in college. Everybody's going to get, I mean, it's going to happen. It's out there. Do, right. And do we sit there and you lock people up and then you arrest people for shutting their businesses down? I mean, he's getting to a point where it's like you're taking belief out of people. People are going, all right, this is enough. Yeah. When is it? And now you got, if you tell them stay at home. What are you going to do? I mean, what they, I mean, I think in. Uh, are you staying at home every day? Huh? Heck no. I'm not staying at home. No, but I am taking precautions to. I mean, you know, we went and ate Cajuns the other day. They're back open. Got Are they? Cajuns. But we walk in the door and they're like, please use the hand sanitizer on the wall. <clears throat> so we do that. And then we go pay. And then you get up to the front. And instead of you making your own plate at the buffet line, they have somebody there to make your plate for you. It's like cafeteria. And then they, I like that. Then they make you put on gloves while you're standing there like, Going through the line, you have glo- your gloves on. And you're like, hey, I want this, 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 and this. And then they give you your plate at the end, and then you get your drink, and you go down, sit down. So they're taking some serious precautions there, too. But it was a little off. You know, I like my ratio. I like my you know, red beans and rice. <coughs> Excuse me. I like my red beans and rice to be like have the <laughs> just right amount of juice on it. And I used to, you know, red beans on the Cajun rice. I don't put it on the white rice. That's a little, it's a little Cajun's hack for y'all. Cajun Ricky's out there. If y'all don't know anything about that. But um, you didn't get to pick your own specific, like, you know, hey, I want that roll right there. You know, I wasn't like that. It's been so long since I've had Cajuns. Dude, it's, a, it's I, amazing. I only eat Mexican food. Really? I had Mexican today. I had uh, burrito zone. I had burrito zone. Shut up. Today? I, yeah, I ate there at 11, 30, 12 o'clock-ish. I ate there. It must have been way later than me. No. I ate there at 2. Yeah, that was way later. What I, are you doing copying me, man? No, I was there first. No. I was 11. You're two. I had three tacos. No, then you didn't. No, you didn't get a burrito at Burrito Zone. No. It's like going to Waffle House and not getting a waffle. Well, don't judge me. I'm just, I'm judging. I, I feel like I like that place. It's, it appears to be owned by a local family. Very much so. And, you know, they're all in there working. I feel like the mom and the husband and the kids. So they have one in uh, Gaucher by the mattress store. Do they? Yeah. Is just, it the same family? Same family. If they're open from 11 a.m. to 3. Maybe I need to go hit them up on their insurance. Go ahead. I feel like that'd be a good. Yeah, it was good. good uh, but like I said, that, it's been a while since I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, when the Popeye's chicken sandwich thing happened, I had some chicken. You know? But uh, I haven't really been big in the chicken. Well, dude, we need to go to Cajuns. I know. And, and it's not just about the, the chicken at Cajuns. It's about the sides. It's about. Oh, oh, <laughs> we have ghosts? What did you just break? I don't know. Um, the vegetables, man. The vegetables there are awesome. And then they got soft serve ice cream and the brownies and the cobblers. And, mm. I Look. did do, I did uh, run for Drew. Yeah. Or Drew's dad. Yeah. I run for Andy. How many miles have you ran in the past? Um, I'm on day four. Uh, I don't know. I mean, with my disability, of course, I'm not running. Right. But um, you're still active. But, but how many miles? Not even looking at miles. What are you, you counting steps? No, I just count. Uh, I'll go from, I'll do a full circle. Uh, I'll, I'll walk without stopping. Uh huh. Hour and 40 minutes. That's a lot. Yeah, so it's probably... So it's a time thing, not a distance thing. Yeah, that's how I do it, though. Okay. I mean... Get your heart rate up. That's... Yep. Yeah. That's so how you burn been, fat. Yeah, I've been doing that. Um, but I'm trying to lose some weight here. These Modellos are probably helping out pretty good with that. I think so. Yeah? Yeah. Are they good? Very. I like Modelo. Very It's good. different. Whenever I get bored with beer, I'll, I go switch it up sometimes, and Modelo is one of them. You know, I actually drank something this weekend. Okay. Um, Greg Williams, my buddy Greg Williams, you know Greg. His dad, Big Greg, I saw him at Wahoo's not too long ago, and he was drinking White Claw mixed with Tito's, half and half. Was it and, good? And I'm like, man, Big Greg's drinking White Claw and Tito's. Oof, that stuff that sounds strong. And then this past weekend at the golf tournament, I'm sitting there looking around, and I was like, I think I'm going to have a Greg drink. And I got a White Claw, and I mix half Tito's, half White Claw. And in the heat, it was refreshing. But 
very, very dangerous. So I walk around just saying, hey, I'm drinking Greg drink. And uh, it's a new thing now. So I'll probably have some Greg drink later. Or maybe, again, definitely. I recommend it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, no, I think I think that it sounds good, though. Thanks, Mr. Greg. Mr. That, Greg. Mr. Greg, it yeah. is good. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Greg. We're going to steal that. I already did. It's called Greg Drink, in homage to you. And I'm going to make a vodka drink and put your face on it. Yeah, we can do that. Oh, yeah. They have some kind of vodka drink now. I've been seeing it's in a, it's in a can. Um, I can't remember the name of it, but it's, I don't know how it's Vodka legal. soda. Yeah, you've seen 5%, that? 5%, yeah. You've seen it? I was staring at it yesterday because Emily likes um, pineapple, things of that nature. <laughs> fruit? <laughs> yeah, just drinks. Fruit. She's like, yeah, you know. So I'm looking over. She's like, "Can you get me something with pineapple and coconut?" I like how you said that. Both of them, though, are coconut. Ch- yeah, but they're kind of hard to find. Puts the lime in the coconut. Spe- uh, do you know? Uh, so they had the vodka. Oh, and, for, and and not to be off subject, but you know what tomorrow is? Um, we gotta Tuesday, get Captain Al tomorrow. Tuesday. Yeah, so we do the podcast there. Live. It's gonna be over. Pop. We're gonna probably do the podcast right after. Oh. I don't know if you wanted to go do it there. No, because I mean it's gonna be it's gonna be crowded. Oh yeah, perfect. <laughs> Make every single one of them like us and follow us and come interview one of them and get them on. Say hello to your mom and them. I'm just guessing. That's how they'll sound. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you're the. Uh, well, I'm gonna be up there with the mic with you too. Yeah. It's gonna be a good year for us. I think so. We're pushing forward with the pink restaurant. Yeah, and and you know I see some after party pictures from the crew of Neptune's after party for. The golf tournament didn't look like there was many people there. And I want to shout out to Andy and Keister Federal for supporting this uh, this year. And thank you so much, dude. He's such an awesome support staff. You know? He loves locals. Yeah, we got a good support system. We do, and and I think that was a good call to go forward with this. You know, because we're going to be outside; they'll be separated. Well, we're talking almost November. Yeah. And we're, we're raising money for breast cancer. Plus, if the heat kills this virus, it's 127 degrees outside today. But if it doesn't, we're going to have, I think in history, there's there's diseases in, that, and viruses that are, come around. I mean. Yeah, I'm not scared of it, man. I got to live, buddy. Yeah. And I think that's where it comes down to, you know, all right, I stayed indoors for a couple months. I've yeah, done this thing. Yeah, You've done the safe thing. Now it's time to. Let them drop, get out there. and Now I want to hug somebody. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and now it's part of that in life. I miss hugging friends. Yeah, me too. I miss Not cra- really. Huh? Not really. Well, I still I'll- hug my friends, but I don't ever see anybody now. I feel like that's one thing that's taken away is uh, your ability to network or communicate or come around. I mean, I've had recently probably four or five events that I've been to where there's been more than 100 people at, and it feels good. But I'm still not hugging everybody. <laughs> well, that's on you. Yeah. I like to hug. Being precautious. Well, I like to hug. Now people aren't telling you if they have coronavirus. They just keep it a secret because they don't want anybody to know. I mean, are you going to, I mean, if you have coronavirus, are you going to come out and talk about it? No, I'm going to, yeah, I will. Absolutely. I'll video the whole thing just as a documentary so Hillary Clinton can kill me later. <laughs> <laughs> so that's pretty much my plan of action. <laughs> Coming soon. I guess I need to go that route too. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, why not? <laughs> um, what if we have two completely different reactions to it? Like you get sick and I don't, but we'll be able to still document it all. And I don't know. I'm not looking forward to getting it if I do get it. I, but I've known there's a lot of people that get it, but I know that, I mean, th- there's deaths as, that are happening and occurring. But I mean, there's a lot. I mean, it, there's a lot of deaths with other diseases, man. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it's like smoking cigarettes. My big thing them. that I'm worried about, you not to cut you off. Is how many deaths from suicide? Yeah, people that suffer because I'm I'm a person that suffers from men- mental illness. Uh, I speak about it all the time. It's and right. you stay indoors. You 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 know you, you you lose some money, work. You know you go through some situations. You you start you're really diving in and, and talking to yourself. You know you're really getting you're beating yourself up mentally because you can't get out in the sun, which is that's great to do and socialize. So you're stuck at your house. You're seeing your house all the time. How many how many episodes of television can you watch? How many Netflix series can you binge until you really start getting in this weird situation? And there's a lot of people that have committed suicide during the coronavirus. Man, I haven't even looked at it. It's I'm sad. Sure. It's so sad. And it's it's like, come on, guys. Get you back know, to it. Like we gotta start something because people there are that's what 
there's so many people that that battle. You know, it's not it's not even funny. It's it's to a point where you really feel bad for somebody because you know people do have to have a job, and not only a job not for money, but they have a job to be around people to socialize. Yeah, I mean, there's I guarantee you, there's people that look forward to seeing you come in their office. They ain't seen me in a while. But you get my concept, my flow. There's people that yep. look forward to seeing their workmates because that might be their only friends. Yeah. And you take that away and you put them for a couple months and then you have all this negative stuff on the news spinning, spinning, spinning. Yeah. And that's been, I think that's been, I think if you ask me what bothers me the most about the coronavirus and you got politicians just. Finger pistols in. It's, it's your fault. No, it's your fault. No, it's your fault. No, We're no, no. all part it's of the problem. Exactly. Every single one of us. We're all in it together. I went crazy during this, man. So and check you, on your friends. Make sure you guys reach out to your friends. Say, hey, how you doing? Yeah, uh, just send like it's a compliment. Reach out. Ask them how they're doing. Uh, shop local. Go eat of, local. Bring your mask with you. Think about how many of your friends, you know, in the food industry. Uh, you know, I talked to uh, Ryan, uh, Dana's husband. Mm-hmm. Gibbons. Gibbons and seen him today, him and his son. And, you know, he does uh, Cisco Foods. Yeah. And we were talking about it, and you can – there's a few few of the businesses that that uh, had to close their doors for good. Yeah, I'm hearing more and more. And that you, – that you can tell it struck a nerve with him. You oh. know, it's like – Well, that's he taking money out of his pocket. But it, I, you can tell he was, like, very concerned about, man, if you know, it's two businesses that already have shut doors, man, for good. Well, that's why we need to keep pushing through and doing things. Like the pink dress run. And hollow Gras and Mardi Gras. And, and just take precaution, man. Get back I, to I normal. Mean, how many times can you, I mean, I'm taking all the precautions I can. I think everybody should wash our hands. Yeah, all the time. Not just whenever the, the government says you need to. But the hard thing you're going to deal with in the South, that if you're not from the South and you're watching this, is hospitality is what we're about. It's something that when I was growing up and I didn't open the door for you, I got spanked. Yeah, I mean that's a real thing. Like if I didn't open the door or offer you something to yeah, drink, no, or ma'am, eat. yes, sir. Uh, I would, I would get chewed out, ear pull, and that's things that it's hard to take some a person like me. Like I still open the door and hold the door for people. I don't think I'm ever gonna stop doing that. It's it's just there. Yeah. So it's kind of one of the things I will say. I don't in other areas. Who knows how your manners are, but in the South, still opening them doors. Yep. I but then putting Germex on afterwards. Oh, man. I, I mean, I pretty much shower with, uh, but there's so many different hand sanitizers now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Tequila, hand like everything. I'm not smell. using that. You need to smell it. Yeah, I don't like tequila smell. makes me want to gag, so I'm good. I'm not big on tequila. I'll drink it every now and again, but it's still not my favorite. I no, just but, stick with the Germex brand, man. Um, Salt Bay on my Germex. Really? Yeah. Do you do alloy or do you regular? Regular. Aloe. Hello, sorry. Hello. Oh well. well I the Modellos. All right, let's check out. Let's go uh let's go be creative and work on something fun. Guys, we appreciate y'all tuning in. And we'll see you next time. Peace out.